All right, guys, so right now we're under the M45. Um, we're going to go ahead and begin disconnecting the transmission from the engine. That way we can go ahead and start taking the engine out. Um, I already picked up my engine hoist, which is the one over there. And then right here, we have to remove a few things now. I'm not going to actually remove my transmission. I'm going to leave it in here. But in case you guys are interested in removing the transmission, you would need to go ahead and remove this brace right here. That's holding the transmission into place. There's two bolts on this side, two on the here. And there's two more right here as well on the inside, but you shouldn't have to remove those because that's just like attached to the transmission itself. So as long as you remove these two over here, it should come off. You also got to remove the bolts to the drive shaft, which are these. I believe there's about four of them. That should disconnect it. And then over here, there's a few bolts that go to the transmission. Uh, there's about two at the bottom. So there's this one right here. Then there's another one over there. Then you have about three more on that side and then two at the top. And I believe there's about three or four on this side and then two at the top. Uh, once you disconnect those, um, then there is another thing that you have to remove on the inside, but you're supposed to remove this other thing on the inside that I'll show you guys from the front of the engine. And then the one last thing that I actually got to remove um, is gonna be a starter, which is that one over there. After I disconnect all those parts, then we should be good to go ahead and take out the engine and the transmission should stay but you do need some support right here in the front um i was thinking about doing it on this part right here which goes to the brace for the cats that should support it really well um i wouldn't put anything on here just because this is the um transmission pan and i'm pretty positive it's expensive to replace this or just to get this part alone and you don't want to damage it all right so here's the front of the engine here's the Crane case right there at the front. That is a 19 mil bolt. And then you want to go ahead and go to this portion right here, which you see should have a plate right there, but it doesn't have one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but we got to remove those bolts that are right there that are holding the plate into place in order to disconnect it. So um, in order to rotate that, you have to rotate the front right here. So I have my 19 mil. We're gonna place it on there. And then as I turn it, that's gonna turn that as well. So I now need to go ahead and move it around. That way I can get it to a good spot. And then we can go ahead and loosen those bolts. All right, there you go, there's one. Just like that. Now we gotta get the other ones. I think there's a total of like four of them, but I'll let you guys know. Just keep rotating it until you see another one and then take it off. All right, guys, so I got all of them off. There was a total of four uh, right there that you guys can see. This one's not part of it right here, the longer one. But it was those four. I almost stripped one. Uh, which was this one right here. I got so lucky it didn't strip. Because to get something in there is going to be pretty hard. But yeah, there you go. There's that one removed. And then let me rotate it. It helped a lot. Like a little bit of a pointer is that you can use the breaker bar on here. And at the same time, turn this one. To loosen it that's how I did it because honestly the other way of just like using one hand to do it it's gonna be almost impossible and I did hurt myself a little bit because I mean I don't have like a really far reach so every time I would loosen a bolt my hand would hit like the end of this right here so my hands like a little bit bruised up but right there you can see the other one taken off and then I mean it takes a while to spin it Especially if you don't have like an extra hand helping you. Like right now I can't see, I'm just doing it by feel. Over here on this side. Alright, there you go. And then rotate it again. Rotating just a plate and the back part's not rotating anymore so that means it's no longer attached. You can see that the hole is no longer lining up with it anymore. But, yeah, now that that has been removed, 
Now we can go ahead and disconnect the um, transmission and then also we need to disconnect the starter on here on this side. Um, I don't know if I need to disconnect like the entire starter or just the wiring that goes to it because I technically already removed all the wiring, uh, which is this one right here. This one goes back to the starter. It's going to be really hard to see, but it's all the way back there. I was thinking about disconnecting it from the top right here and not through the bottom. That way the motor mount can still stay on there. So there's a bolt from the bottom or the nut. And then the starter is somewhere right here. Let me get a feel by hand. So right there where my finger's at, this grommet that's connected to the starter right there. So that's most likely the one I need to remove. I don't think I need to remove the starter completely. I think I just gotta take that bolt off and then this wiring harness should come off. I think, well actually there might be something else cause I have like another, you guys can't really see it but there's this wire right here and there's another one behind it that I'm feeling right now. I'm not sure what it's attached to. So I would have to take that off. So this one right there, disconnect that. And that should be the entire um, wire harness along with the bolt that goes to this right here. So let's go ahead and take that off. All right guys, so it appears that we got all the wiring. There was this one right there that was connected to this right here. It's just a clip on the other end that you gotta take off. And then right here, on this side, which was a hard part to get to, to the starter. Um, this is a 12 mil, and I put the nut back on there. And then there was just this other connection right there as well. So there's a total of three going to that. And now the whole like wiring harness is now like loose, and I'm gonna put it on the side over there. So for the most part, it looks like everything is disconnected. I believe that is pretty much it when it comes to the wiring. Um, here's the hose for the power, not the power, seeing the transmission right here. It's all loose. You guys can kind of see it right there. That way it doesn't come out with the motor, mess up those lines. And then the motor mounts right here, those are um, 14 mil. So I loosened that with a open-ended wrench. Same thing with this one right here, it's already loose. And I think for the most part, uh, that is Honestly, it I, I think I'm just gonna check around again to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, there was like just this ground right here. I um, already removed that, and then just checking the sides, make sure nothing else is connected. Like I disconnected all of these right here, all the hoses right there. And let me zoom out a little bit. So all of this is disconnected right here. On the sides, there's nothing connected. And then over here, all these hoses are disconnected as well. Um, those are all connected to like the block directly so that it'll come up with it. Um, the only thing that I noticed that is still connected is this right here. Um, it's this, the transmission like fluid tube where you check the level. And there's a bolt right here, which I believe goes to the transmission. So when you take that transmission bolt out, that'll most likely go out with it. So we shouldn't have to, um, like remove this because I've seen a video I think or I think somebody was working on like a VK56 where they remove the whole tube um, the engine is like all the way over here and it stops right there and then it goes to the transmission over here so I don't think we need to remove that I should have enough space to be able to lift it up a little bit pull it forward so um, this is disconnected right here as well fuel line which is that one right there it goes just straight down now that one I don't think is connected to the body of the car either because it goes up and then it connects right here somewhere in this area so that's been disconnected so i'm pretty positive that's technically it so i just got to remove the transmission bolts i'm supported from the bottom and i think we should be good to go ahead and pull this um the last thing i really need is going to be um the engine stand and then also i need a strap to be able to pull it so I don't think I'm gonna use those mounting points that I've seen in other videos where they mount to like right here. There's two holes 
to be able to add like a bracket but i think i'm just gonna go ahead and just strap it or unless they provide some bolts that i could just strap it with that right there um that'll work as well but yeah uh i think the next step is to go ahead and take off the transmission bolts but i'm gonna wait until i get the straps that i need to strap up the engine that we can start pulling it out and then i could put the jack under there and i do need a wood piece i think i have some in the back that i can use all right so yeah let's pick it up in a little bit once we get those other things and then we'll move on to the next steps all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and end the video right there i just need the um, engine hoist like leveler to come in once that comes in we're gonna start removing the engine I did pick up an engine hoist already. I paid like 40 bucks for it. It was used, but a lot of people are still asking like 150, 200 for a used engine hoist. I only paid 40 bucks, so I was really happy about that. Um, once that stuff comes in, we're gonna start removing the engine. I'll go into more detail what else needs to be removed. If I run into any issues, I'll go over that in the next video as well. But I went ahead and picked up another Hot Wheel. This one gives me the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift vibes from the Green Mustang. This one's really sick. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the wall with the rest of my most of cars that I have up there. Um, I've been collecting quite a few and the collection is growing. So I wanna continue to do that. The wall is filled up as you can see. I have like a few more up there. So um, I'm gonna have to pick up something else because I don't really wanna add like pins to the wall because I don't wanna make a bunch of holes on there. So I'll figure out another way to be able to mount them up. But I'm gonna make another video on that once I find something. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for the next video because we're for sure going to be pulling out this motor once um, all that stuff comes in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.